Welcome everyone to the first episode of No Off Season, and today we are joined by UFC strawweight Brianna Van Buren. Brianna, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Um, I'm all right after all the technical problems we just had. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to start off right away by saying that I did a lot of research before I spoke to you because I wanted to come correct, of course. But mm -hmm. other than that, um, the first question I have is very simple for you because it's something that I did not find anywhere. Um, how'd you come up with the nickname, The Bull? Yeah. Um, so my grandfather um, used to call me uh, El Torito, which means baby bull in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was younger, I had that personality. He gave me that name due to uh, my personality when I was uh, a young, uh, when I was a kid. Um, and it kind of just stuck with me throughout my whole fighting uh, journey. Um, my coaches, they would call me the bull because I come forward a lot. So then they were like, hey, like, um, you know, my grandfather called me bull. Like I had the, my personality was like, I don't really take shit from anybody. Um, and so it kind of just stuck with me. My, my coaches were like, her name, her, her nickname is the bull. So, yeah. <laughs> After you explain it, I can't even lie. I'm kind of mad. I didn't get to that one first. <laughs> but I mean, you're the bull now, so I guess I got to find so something else. Maybe the last question, yeah. I'll, I'll, the last question I'll have you name me after this. <laughs> um, but I want to start with the state of California because mm -hmm. it obviously means a lot to you, Gilroy. And um, after watching most of your fights and looking at most of them, I noticed that um, out of 11 of your fights there's only been three that have been out of the state of california what does california mean to you growing up there um and what does gilroy mean to you oh uh california is my home i'm you know i was born and raised in gilroy california and the support system that i have in you know gilroy california is we're very close everybody it's a small town um, you know, my family grew up in Calif in Gilroy, California as well. So, um, you know, we, we hold, uh, very strong values and it, we're all close in Gilroy, California. So, um, it means a lot. And just to fight in California in general, um, it's a huge, it's, it's huge, you know? <clears throat> well, what were some of the things that you enjoyed doing growing up there, like activity wise? Oh, there are so many things. Um, I'm a very outdoorsy person. Um, I enjoy hiking. Um, I go duck hunting. Um, I enjoy uh, playing soccer. Um, at a young age, I played soccer as well before I um, started training mixed martial arts. Uh, there are a lot of things. Fishing. Um, again, I'm a very outdoorsy person and, and Gilray is a small town and that it has, you can do all of that in Gilray. So, <laughs> and, uh, another thing that I noticed doing research with you is, um, you said that in the beginning of your career, it was extremely difficult for you to secure bouts, especially working your way up the amateur ranks and even, um, in your professional career today, um, mm -hmm. One, why do you think it was so difficult for you to secure opponents and, you know, make it all the way to the point where you're getting to the fight? And two, do you think it has anything to do with being female? Um, so I think the reason why it was so difficult for me to get fights, um, even as an amateur when I first started, was, um, you know, I come from a really huge background where even like my coaches, uh, they were uh, professional athletes uh, before they coached me. Um, so I, I think a lot of people kind of seen that as, uh, you know, in, intimidation a little bit. And, you know, I wrestled in high school as well. Um, and I think I have like that warrior spirit of like, you know, not giving up or anything like that, or, you know, just constantly grinding and pushing through. And, you know, I'm always down to scrap. And I think, uh, that is that becomes a threat um and just because i i work hard as well you know a lot of the local people around here um 
a lot of people know who I am, even if they don't want to know who I am. A lot of the female fighters around here, they know who I am, um, you know, and they know that I work my ass off. So um, that says a lot, just, you know, let alone. Um, and I think being a female has yes and no. Um, I think it could to an extent, but at the same time, I'm fighting female other women as well. So I don't know if that's necessarily a... Um, of an intimidation or anything like that, but I train in a room uh, with a group full of men all day. There are no, I have no female training partners. So wow. that could be a little intimidating. Over at AKA, right? Yeah, I train at American Kickboxing Academy. Um, and then I also train at Ant Dogs MMA, which is in Gilroy, um, which is my hometown and where I'm from and where I reside. So, yeah. All right, so we'll fast forward to um, where you're at in your career right now. Um, of course, you did not, um, you weren't able to fight that fight with Hannah Cyphers due to unclosed reasons. We don't have to get into it, whatever it was. But um, I don't I know if you're injured. You. Oh, okay, well, were, were you injured or what was that? Yeah, so um, I have what it's called. I don't know if you've heard of, it's called Trigger Finger. Have you heard of that? No, but it sounds dangerous. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have what was called, I had it before I actually stepped in um, to fight Jamie Moyle back in uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, no, was it 2019, 2018 in December uh, when I fought Jamie Moyle. I've had what it's called trigger finger on my right hand. And I kind of just uh, kept putting it off. You know, I had to get uh, doctors kept uh, requesting a, an injection on the finger and um, it was just, you know, the wrong, it wasn't the right time for me to get that injection. Um, I've had fights, uh, right after the Jamie Moyle fight, I had to get ready for the, uh, Phoenix rising, the tournament, um, fight as well. And then in, uh, July, I had a fight right after that, after the mm -hmm. Phoenix rising got picked up from the UFC and had a fight from that as well. Had this, uh, reoccurring, uh, injury on my right hand and basically my finger, um, it locks up and it'll get to the point where like, um, I can't, it, well, it got to the point where I couldn't make a fist anymore. So, um, my management team, my, my coaching team, we got in connected with the performance Institute. Uh, they flew me out to Vegas and I ended up actually getting an injection. Um, and then, uh, they said this this should get you through the fight so this injection was supposed to get me through the hannah cypher fight um and it never got it never got better um and i told myself well if it doesn't get better and if it stays the same i'll still be okay to take the fight well three days after i got that injection i got some numbing um it started occurring on my in my forearm area and Ooh. I started to freak yeah I started to freak out a little bit um and was calling the doctors calling uh getting second third you know opinions from different hand specialists to kind of figure out um how can I go about this how can I save this fight you know and uh I talked to every every doctor that I had spoke to they told me the same thing well, we can give you another injection um, and uh, in hopes that, you know, it'll get you through the fight. But if it never got better and it actually got worse, I told myself, why am I going to put myself in that same position? You know, yeah. um, why am I wasting my time? So immediately um, doctor, re my doctor requested a, um, an x-ray um, just to kind of see, well, OK, well, maybe maybe it's broken maybe you actually broke it and that's why it's worse because i kept you know punching with it it got to the point where i couldn't even grip um i couldn't grip my training partners i couldn't um i couldn't even make a fist uh, my hand was locking up I what does it do to the hand is it like open or like is it just like one finger or it's just one finger yeah so it's just one finger but the thing is is i was getting uh what it was called um some like nerve damage I think, um, yeah, and I started to get like some pain shooting up to my neck. So at this point, I'm like, okay, my health is important. 
Um, I want to, I, I plan on chasing, I'm, ch I'm here to chase the title. Um, you know, I, I want that strap. I'm coming for that strap. So, um, I went again, went and got an x-ray, did what the doctors wanted and, you know, no broken bones, nothing. They went in, looked at it again. And doctor was like, okay, we're going to have to go through some surgery. It got to the point where it was like, these injections aren't even working. You got to go, we got to go in we got to scrape all that scar tissue out. So I'm actually Ooh. scheduled to get surgery on Thursday, this upcoming Thursday. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I can't make a fist. I can, I mean, I can show you what it looks like, but I mean, even me showing you isn't, you're not really gonna yeah. like, not going to get the full effect. Yeah. It's not going to make a full effect, but it locks up. It's really bad. It, it got to the point again where I just can't make a fist. So I'm gonna go get, go get some surgery done, get it scraped out and get healthy. And, um, you know, hopefully I'm aiming to fight in July. I'm, I'm trying to get on. I know that they normally have like the international fight week in July. Yes. It'd be nice to get on the July I'll be card. There. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully I'll be there too. Yeah. I hope <laughs> but, so. Yeah. So, I mean, as you plot out your timeline for recovery, although you haven't even, you know, had the procedure done yet, um, how do you yeah. feel about the landscape of the division, like the state of the division right now? Oh, it's awesome. Um, honestly, I'm pretty stoked. I think uh, everything is kind of happening. Uh, and like, it's every reason why I feel like I'm going to end up being the strawweight champion. It's not the end of the, this year, early next year. Um, I really do believe that. Um, there's a lot of girls that aren't making weight right now that are moving up to fly, to the flyweight. Um, so I think, I, I think it's awesome. And speaking of girls that are moving up in weight, what about girls that, uh, you feel might, you know, perform better down in weight? Do you think that the UFC needs to add an atom weight division? Um. I mean, yeah, I think, I think there are some girls out there that that'll, uh, you know, some 115ers that'll move down to 105. Um, I talked about it with my coaches, even myself, uh, when, when I didn't get picked up, um, I talked about even, uh, going down to 105 and chasing after that 105 Invicta belt. Um, but now it's a whole new ball game. I'm in the UFC and, you know, I'm now it's like, I'm, I'm chasing the that strap, and it, I mean, if they make the an atom weight divi division, I think there are a handful of girls that'll that'll go down. I think Carla Esparza talked about it. There, you got the Invicta atom weight champ Jenny Frey. You know, um, I think there's a there's a good amount of people. I think even Jessica Pen Penne talked about mm -hmm. moving down to 105. So, yeah, I think there's a there's a handful of girls who who will definitely move down to 105s. I mean. I myself will cross that bridge when it comes, but right now the main focus is getting healthy and, and getting that 115 strap. The reason why I ask that is because a lot of people on social media um, see you as a person that could potentially have some champ champ status <laughs> with a yeah. division down there and also at straw weight. But um, yeah. let's it actually slide into social media right now because um, I don't know if you recently did attend or were going to attend the WWE event, your first one. Did that happen yes. yet or no? And what was that uh, yeah. experience like for you? Yeah, I actually just went last night. Uh, they held one at the SAP Center and honestly, it was awesome. Um, I, I had been thinking about it uh, for quite, quite some time and um, my support system has kind of been pitching it to me and you know i went to go check it out yesterday to kind of see if i might have an interest in it and it looked really fun honestly it, it, i would definitely be down to down to go out there and, and have some fun in the wwe that's another thing <laughs> that crossed my mind as soon as you said that you were attending an event i was like she should be in the ring i yeah. could definitely see that happening I, I would sure. totally do it. Yeah, I'll talk. To, I'm going to I think I'm going to talk to my management and see what what they can do. I'll talk to DC and Kane. I know that uh, oh, Kane yeah. has, you know, Kane, Kane is is over there right now. And he was there yesterday. And, you know, um, I'll talk to them and see, see what they think, what route I should go. And, and maybe, you know, who knows, maybe after I'm done uh, with 
uh, chasing the belt and getting that UFC strap, maybe I'll make my way to the WWE. Yeah, you would kill it in NXT, like, for sure. They have, like, a lot of girls, but there's a lot of things that stand out about you where you would definitely kill that. But um, Thank you. There's some, there's some other things I noticed on social for you, especially on Instagram. Seems like you're a big yoga person. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all about yoga. Um, there's a yoga studio uh, in Gilray as well. Um, it's called Best Yoga Studios. Um, I, I enjoy it. I love it. Um, it clears my mind. It's one of those things that I put in as part of my visual visualization training. Um, you know, uh, training MMA just it isn't just you know sparring and and you know hitting pads and whatnot it's all about it's visualization as well and i think that's one of the uh, most important things to have um especially as wanting to be a champion is you know getting that that self-care in and and that quality time to just visualize and, and yoga takes it for me <clears throat> that's uh, some very interesting stuff it's something that i've never done before and i've thought about trying it because i just see yeah. like a wave of it it's just happening yeah. all over the place and it's extremely beneficial i just never get around to trying it's, it it's super benef it's super beneficial you should try it honestly you should give it a whirl um in the beginning i'm gonna be quite honest with you i was kind of like eh, yoga isn't for me i'm more of a kind of outdoorsy person i'm like i'm like always about let's go like you know um <laughs> So yoga, it was more of like, okay, calm, connecting with yourself. It was just a different environment for me and took me out of my comfort zone. But honestly, it, it I love it. I It helps me with stretching as well, too. I use it sometimes for, for stretching. Sometimes I need that stretching, again, or visualization or just, just going in there and just kind of detoxing the mind and the body. So, yeah. So another thing that I noticed scrolling down your Instagram is, all right, so there's a popular quote, and I'm sure everyone knows it, when they say, get you a girl who can do both, right? So <laughs> yeah. we're scrolling down, we see you in the dresses, and we see you in the fight gear, and that's cool. You can do both of those. But then I get to a picture, and I see a pair of camo Under Armour boots. And I think the <laughs> caption says it's duck hunting season. And I yep. was like, does Brianna Van Buren hunt ducks? Yes, I do. So, I, that would also be a cool fighting nickname if you want to come off of that bull one and give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's the nickname? Brianna the Duck Hunter. Brianna the Duck Hunter. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I might actually reconsider that. Yeah. I, yeah, because I they always say, like, lame girls are ducks anyway, right? Like, lame yeah. people are ducks. So you're hunting yeah, them, you're fighting them. It, it works. But, yeah, anyway, so when did, when, did you, when did you start the duck hunting? Oh, about six, seven years ago um, I got into it. I tried it for the first time, and to be quite honest, when I tried it out, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I can do this. This is kind of like a – it's slow, like, you know. Um, but then it was more, it became more of an addiction. Like it was like, oh, wow. Well, like I want to go out there again. Like I, you know, um, I shot my first duck and then after that, it was like, I want to do it again. Let's keep going, you know? Um, but yeah, it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, that's a part of, uh, like I use that for more when I go to duck hunting, I use that more for like, um, just getting out of my element sometimes, you know, sometimes going through like training and doing the same stuff over and over again, it, it can be a little like, uh, what do you call it? Not boring, but it's just getting out of my comfort zone a little bit. So duck hunting yeah. seems to be one of those. So yeah, I enjoy it. Walk me through the, like the process of the day when you duck hunt. Like, is this like an all day event? Like, do you wake up yes. early? go down oh, to like yeah. a river or something like like are they hard to find are they hard to get what do you use to yep. get them like these yep. are the questions i have so we got shotguns um i used a a, tw a 12 gauge um and a typical day of duck hunting is i prepare the night before um I do this thing where I eat, I make, uh, if I'm not in camp, I make a uh, chorizo burritos. Um, mm -hmm. so the night before I'm preparing, I'm preparing a uh, breakfast and there's about anywhere between four to eight of us going out. 
and um, make breakfast the night before. We'll wake up at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, get on the road. It's about two hours away. Sometimes there's a spot that we go that's about, uh, it's called, it's in Calusa. It's about mm -hmm. two and a half, three hours away. So if we're hunting at Calusa, then we'll go, um, we'll get up at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, make sure all of our stuff is loaded up the night before and then we'll just get on the road I'll jump in the car get on the road and then um, we'll go out there and have some fun um, we're basically waiting in the blinds um, it's there's like this river and then uh, there's like blinds uh, in the river and whatnot and we'll go out there um, and just kind of wait and then uh, once the sun rises we'll we'll go and have some fun so how many do you usually get like in one day? Oh, um, well, your limits are seven, so I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to make myself out. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah we don't snitch limits... on this show. Yeah. Okay. So limits are seven, but we can, we normally shoot about, um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We normally shoot about seven each. We go home about, uh, I don't know, 45, uh, 49. I don't know. I can't tell you. <laughs> All right. So it's definitely seven and nothing yeah. more. Wow. Yeah. Um, are you a big music person? I love music. That's yeah, another thing it seemed like, cause we, uh, we see the captions on all your photos are usually like lyrics. Yeah. I love music. I love rap. I love country music. Um, I love, I have an old soul, honestly. I love a lot of like old oldies, um, Brentwood, um, Jackson 5, uh, oh, wow. I, Whitney Houston, and Vogue. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have, oh, okay. like, yeah, I have a really yeah, old I see soul, where... <laughs> yeah. but I love I music. <laughs> So um, other than the music, right, one of the biggest questions that I got is about your ethnicity. So mm -hmm. just for clarification, um, you are Mexican, right, mm -hmm. and African-American. Uh-huh. Do you think either of those plays a part in, is, is, it, is it another hurdle that you have to leap over um, making progression in MMA, or do you feel like it's just something that just is just who you are and didn't really affect you uh, navigating your way through fighting yeah I don't think it I don't think it actually affected me at all to be quite honest with you um, I think if anything it opened a lot more doors uh, for me uh, being a mixed uh, girl um, but yeah I'm half Mexican and half black and um, I I honestly don't think it it played a huge effect on me in any way and as as far as like the rarity of african-american or mexican girls in the ufc um do you think that's a testament to um just maybe those girls not finding the sport or do you think it, there's some kind of barrier or is it just a coincidence what do you think uh the reasoning is for that i think that's part of who I think it's part of what made me me and who I am, um, to be quite honest with you. Like, I'm, um, I just, I don't know. I don't think there's that many um, Mexican and Black girls out there. Um, it's very rare. That's for like sure. even, Yeah, even, like, in high school, um, even in school, like, I've never really, like, I think I was the only Mexican and Black girl in class. Like, it, so, like, I think it's very rare. Um, that there are mixed breeds like myself, um, but yeah. <clears throat> so now we're going to jump into the fan questions because there's only two. One is from at Yugi. He wants to know what's the most difficult aspect of being an MMA fighter in general. And um, what he means by that is, um, is it harder while you're actually fighting or is it more difficult for things like training doing media um diet those kinds of things hmm 
Uh, I would say um, it would probably be, for me, training is fun. I don't know. Honestly, I'm stumped because training is really fun for me. Like, I go in there and have a good time, so I can't really say that. It, I guess it's while I'm in camp, that can be a little, um, a little. Uh, what do you call it? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, that's where your self-discipline would have to uh, come to kick in. Uh, just because, you know, you have friends and family, uh, birthdays come up, you know, holidays come up and, you know, and, and you're cutting weight or, you know, you're dieting down or, you know, you have to stay focused on the tasks. So you have to show up to practice and put the work in, um, you know, um, that would probably be the most uh, difficult Um but in the end, it's all fun, and it makes it all worth it when you get that W. So, yeah. Which you, you have a lot of, a lot of Ws. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to just and keep racking them up. <laughs> we're sure you're going to. And the second question actually kind of uh, ties into that. Smokey J MMA, he wants to know, um, do you feel like your opponents might overlook your skill set and how dangerous you actually are because of your height? Yeah, Which, I think – you're like 4'11", right? Yeah. Which I think a lot of people think that's why I can make 105s. But to, I'm I'm a stocky 4'11 girl. Like, I'm, yeah. I, you know, I carry a lot of muscle. And um, I think the girls do kind of overlook me a little bit because they think I'm just this small, little, cute little girl who's just, you know, not going to really do anything. But um I don't know. And then also on top of the fact that a lot of people uh, label me as a wrestler because of either my background, me winning jujitsu tournaments, me taking first place at Nogi Worlds as a blue belt and me, um, you know, living in Gilroy, wrestling at Gilroy High for a year. And now you have DC who who is wrestling there and, you know, and American Kickboxing Academy. There's a lot of wrestlers there and, you know. I think a lot of people think that I'm a wrestler, so they overlook my stand-up. But in reality, I come from a stand-up uh, gym. My uncle, he is a badass Muay Thai fighter, a badass kickboxer, mm -hmm. a black belt in San Cho. I have a black belt in Chinese kickboxing. Um, Ooh, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I think a lot of the girls do overlook me based off of, you know, just from, oh, she's just this wrestler and she's tiny and – She's just going to go in there and brawl. But in reality, I'm just not going to give up. And that's where that, that Mexican blood in me comes out. So, yeah. And the thing is, too, for being 4'11", you don't really have a short reach. No, like, I you don't. You don't really have a short reach at all. Yeah, I so, have, like, it's yeah. like the average. I think I think I have, like, the average of what a straw weight is supposed to have. It's, like, 62-inch reach advantage. Um, so... Yeah, we were actually, I was actually just talking about that with my brother, um, because he was like, dude, your arms are super long, like your arms are longer than you actually think. And, uh, and we like did the measurements and stuff. And we we're, we we're like, I was like, wow, actually, yeah, you're right. So yeah. yeah, especially compared to like some of the, the top girls in the division, your the reach factor is not that big for you. I mean, the height might be but yeah. the reach isn't. So yep. that's another thing that I noticed. But wow. um, before we get out of before we get out of here, as promised, right? Mm -hmm. So by the end of this interview, you are going to give me a nickname. Now I can't take the bull because that's yours, and Duck Hunter is also yours. That's what? Kind of selfish. <laughs> so where are we going to buy? I mean, I mean, you know me a little bit now. What, what are you going to go with? I think your personality it kind of reminds me of mine a little bit. Um, it sounds like right. you also like to duck hunt as well. I've never duck hunted before, but oh. I think I would try with Brianna Van Buren and her camp. <laughs> and you're super open-minded as well. So, hmm, I think we can call you, ooh, what am I going to say? Like the mini ginger bull? The Little mini ginger, ginger bull. bull? No, I don't like the mini yeah, ginger bull. No. Maybe like the ginger hunter. The hunting Ooh. ginger, ginger. I like the hunting okay. ginger. The hunting ginger. I like that. Yeah. How do you say that in Spanish? The hunting ginger. Oh man, I I don't know. I I'm only half. You'll have to I, figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> I can only speak a little bit of Spanish. 
<laughs> we'll have to figure that out. Well, anyone that you want to thank, sponsors or anything before we get out of here? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, taking the time out of your day to interview me. Um, I know that we were scheduled to interview on Friday um, and some stuff mm -hmm. came up on my end. So thank you for, you know, uh, providing um, some time. Uh, and uh, I really hope you're, you're, is this a podcast? What is this? Uh, it's going to be a video cast. A video cast. Yeah, yeah, sure. It'll be it'll be available on podcast format as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I really hope it takes off. Honestly, I really hope like it. You you get those followers up, and you know you become very successful. I'm curious to know how you're gonna do it within in the next six months. So maybe you can get me back on in the next six months, um, and we'll chat. Yeah. And then um, thanks to all my sponsors, obviously. I'm actually at a, at a fight right now, so I'm outside. I have a couple of my teammates um, fighting. Uh, they might, the show might be going on right now, um, so I'll, I'll have to go, go in there. But uh, thanks to all my sponsors, thanks to my coaches, and, and thank you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. El Torito, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna Van Guren. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You too.